Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, is the CIO of Facebook. So, Tim, thanks for coming. I cannot tell you how excited I was. I was uh, one and a half weeks ago, we met in San Francisco and we had a conversation about what we are going to do and how we are working together. And so I was asking him, uh, not really uh, uh, expecting that he says yes, would you not like to show up here in Amsterdam? <laughs> By the way, beautiful city, I think. And How even can you the... turn that down? <laughs> yeah. So, and Tim is the CIO uh, of Facebook, uh, and I would like to ask him just some questions, how he feels. So first of all, I think the most obvious thing, and my son said, Daddy, if you speak with Tim, uh, let him tell how he feels now after the IPO. <laughs> Is it crazy on Facebook's uh, campus right now? No, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to report that it's not crazy. Okay, but, uh, okay. Yeah, the, the day of the event was certainly very momentous for the employees and everybody had a great time. But, uh, you know, the focus of Facebook is not about being public or going public. It's about, you know, building products that make the world more open and connected. And so uh, that really hasn't changed either before or after the IPO. And so we're, we're really back to work on what we do every day. Do, do you feel like a normal CIO or do you think it's a little bit different? Uh, it's a, it's very different. It's very different. Um, this is the second company I've been the CIO for, and the, the first company I would say was very much a normal CIO role. But uh, now the expectations at Facebook are very different. Okay. Um, and you know, one, the company is growing, so our problems are constantly changing and evolving. Uh, two, the attitude about technology is completely different, as are the expectations. Um, you know, we have very high expectations about what we get out of information technology, and that. Uh, uh, creates uh, a lot of uh, work for, for me and my staff. So, no, it's very, very different. Uh, and also we've d grown up in a, this is a next generation world. So yeah. Facebook is a young company. Um, you know, it's been around for eight years, but a lot of its growth has been within the last three or four. Um, the technologies that are available to build a company in that uh, environment are totally different. Um, we're in a big data world now. Uh, the role of data is extremely important for a company mm -hmm. like Facebook. Um, so yeah, it's very different. Very the, different. The last time we spoke, uh, you said something and I was kind of astonished, said, okay, no, 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 we are adding so much systems to the system every day, uh, data, disk drives, 100 terabyte per week or per month, I, I didn't get it, and we stay beta. Can you a little bit explain what that means? Well, the, the site is constantly growing. Um, you know, we, we serve uh, uh, 700 billion minutes um, of content to our users per month. Um, you know, we every day we get three and a half billion likes on the site. Um, there, and so all that produces huge amounts of, of data that has to go someplace. So uh, just on the analytical side of things in our Hadoop ecosystem, we're adding about 10 terabytes a day. Uh, so this is just huge amounts of data infrastructure that uh, we have to manage as a company. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, after doing it for a long time, I think Facebook's actually gotten pretty good at this. As a matter of fact, uh, coming to data, that is also part of our theme. The, the theme is, is, is uh, marketing uh, staying the same uh, um, after all this new technologies coming to the, uh, to the plate. Um, and as a matter of fact, you are a customer of MicroStrategy, so we are using some of the technology oh, yeah. internally. Uh, how are you using Can you explain it a little bit, what you are doing? Well, we've, we've been a MicroStrategy customer for a while, and we use uh, MicroStrategy quite a bit. Um, we use it for um, our product, product analytics, so mm -hmm. as we're looking at uh, how our different uh, Facebook uh, properties performing, whether we're talking about the news feed or messaging, or, um, a lot of the analytics there are done through MicroStrategy. Mm -hmm. We use it for revenue. Um, every single dashboard for the sales organization um, is uh, positioned through MicroStrategy. We use MicroStrategy to proactively tell our sales force that certain things are going on with customers that they might want to follow up mm -hmm. on. Um, and uh, we started to partner with you guys to do some pretty innovative stuff on um, you know, analyzing the uh, fan bases of uh, customers so we can better work with our customers to get value out of their 
uh, yeah. their fan presence on Facebook. Uh, and so we're, we're doing quite a bit with you yeah. guys, and uh, we're, we're really excited about the partnership and the support that we get from MicroStrategy. In, in such a quick changing environment, as oh, yeah. you explained, uh, how do you keep all the puzzle pieces together? Uh, or uh, what are the biggest challenges for you or the highest priorities for you as a, as a CIO of that, such a company? So, um, uh, one of the challenges for CIOs is you support the entire company. So yeah. everybody is my customer at Facebook. But that, uh, the needs of different parts of the company are, are different. The two most strategic areas for the IT department at Facebook are, one, supporting the growth of, of Facebook, which really means hiring. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for every engineer that we hire into the company, we, we look at 100 of them, mm -hmm. which means if we want to grow by 1,000 engineers, we have to look at 100,000 resumes, and that doesn't scale very well. So our approach to dealing with that is a very data-driven approach. So let's look at the, uh, um, you know, the recruiting pipeline, and let's mm -hmm. identify you know, what are the the different uh, filtration points mm -hmm. and um, let's experiment there with different ways to uh, try to be more effective in um, finding the right candidates. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and so that, that's one of the key focus areas for us. The other is on sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so the company is at the early stages of uh, figuring out how to monetize the user base that it has. and. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, we have been doing a lot to work with uh, our sales teams to better give them insights about what's going on with our customers and how they're spending with us. Um, I mentioned the page insights capabilities yep. that we've been focusing on recently. Um, and really, a, a lot of this is about data. There is so much data within the company. There's so much data that's being generated uh, that the role of the IT department is to make it easy for um, the different functions in the company, particularly sales and marketing, which tend to be non-technical functions, mm -hmm. um, to be able to get access to and, and use that information in a way that helps us to um, help our customers and ultimately um, you know, sell more uh, media and, and uh, advertising to them. Okay. So I would like to ask you, uh, if you have questions for Tim Campos, the CIO of such a fast-growing company, are there any questions you would like to, to ask them uh, here in the room from the audience? Even though we are tired, as a matter of fact, uh, I think we have speeded up quite dramatic, yeah? So we have made a lot of time uh, really good. No, no questions from the audience. Then, then. A question from the audience, and there's, there's a question from me. Um, yeah. uh, Tim, how do you view sort of, um, I wouldn't call them competition, but, you know, the other guys on the block, uh, Pinterest, etc. cetera. Um, we were talking about uh, applications uh, on these platforms and that as far as social media is concerned, of course, they're also important. Um, would you like to embrace them or would you sort of uh, like to keep them away? Um, I think we... we we like to em embrace them. I mean, it's probably maybe one of them um, whose name starts with G that we're not so embracing of. But, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, if you think about the the role of social, um, there, uh, you know, each of the the large successful uh, social media platforms has carved out a specific uh, niche and. Um, you know, Twitter is uh, a great broadcast medium. If mm -hmm. you want to get your message out to a lot of different fans, it's, it's a great way to do that. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, Instagram was an incredible way to share uh, photos. Um, Pinterest has, you know, its own, um, you know, value out there in the world. And, and in fact, Pinterest is one of the largest uh, open graph um, contributors mm -hmm. on Facebook. And so in many respects, um, you know, the growth uh, of Pinterest has uh, been in large part fueled by Facebook. And we've, mm -hmm. we've uh, uh, you know, in, enjoyed lots of user engagement as a result of that. Mm -hmm. So it, it's... I think for the most part, we, we see um, that the world is going to be diverse, and mm -hmm. Facebook's differentiation is this, uh, the, the platform is the source of identity. If you want to have a really strong sense of who uh, you know, your customers are, uh, they are most um, real, honest uh, on, on Facebook. And um, that identity platform uh, can be used in so many different ways. Um, and you know the other uh, thing about Facebook is that we have this 
you know, incredible database of connections, connections between people, connections between people and the brands that they're interested in. And that can be used in so many different ways, whether it's for targeting to get messaging out or it's for an application uh, to get distribution. Um, you know, it is the, the center if you want to build out something that's going to take advantage of, uh, uh, you know, the virality that the, the platform has to offer. So, um, you know, I think the, these other uh, social graphs are important and they serve their own specific purpose. Um, and and we, we definitely recognize that, you know, we're not the only player in the world. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, there's a question? Okay. But no mic. <laughs> no mic? Oh, uh, there oh here is a mic. It's me again. Um, so we've learned that the um, smartphone usage is increasing. So give, can you give us maybe a little insight on the, the approach of Facebook with the mobile app of Facebook? Yeah, so, I mean, definitely what's the exciting thing that's going on in uh, the ecosystem today is this the phenomenal growth of uh, mobile. And um, uh, so that affects us in a couple ways. One, we want to make sure that we have the best user experience uh, on, on our mobile platform. And so we have done um, a number of things to try to improve the performance and the quality of the Facebook app um, mm -hmm. on uh, both uh, iOS, Android, and, and other devices. Um, you know, the Android ecosystem is a little bit more complex to deal with because of the diversity of, of devices that are out there, but we've spent um, a lot of time recently trying to improve the quality of that experience, and hopefully over the next few months you'll see uh, some, uh, some good improvements there. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, how do you reach out and connect to those uh, users? And we've recently uh, deployed changes in our advertising strategy that allow... Um, marketers to um, specifically bid on uh, inventory that uh, is available uh, on the mobile platform. We have a pretty unique advertising strategy there. Um, you know, we don't put these big gigantic or in the case of a mobile device, small gigantic um, ads that are very intrusive. Um, our model is to use the story as the uh, way of, um, uh, you know, connecting with users. Uh, and we find that you get much better um, click-through rates and much better responsiveness um, using uh, sponsored stories, and they um, just flow seamlessly on the mobile devices. Uh, and so we've seen a lot of success with uh, the mobile newsfeed access that we've uh, rolled out recently. And so we're really excited about uh, the growth in the mobile ecosystem. We think that in the uh, in the long run, the way that we think about advertising and connecting with users and fans gives us a pretty significant advantage yeah. over other companies. Without telling uh, secrets, what were the last published numbers? 50% of the users are using mobile devices? Yeah, so something on that order of magnitude. We, we um, uh, have over half a billion users um, that are, are using Facebook through a mobile device. Um, an increasing percentage of them are only on, on mobile. Okay. Um, it's uh, still a minority, but uh, you know, we're seeing that uh, mobile is, uh, is definitely where the growth is, and uh, that, I think, follows just what's going on in the industry. I think it goes back to Michael Saylor's uh, keynote earlier today mm -hmm. that um, you know, the, these mobile devices are transformative, and this is really where the opportunity is. So I think yeah. everybody needs to be thinking mobile first in terms of their strategies. Yeah. I agree. We're, One more question. Ah, yeah. Actually, two more questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the first question is, um, as you said yourself, there are a lot of quote-unquote competing social networks. In fact, if you look at the uh, last South by Southwest conference, it seemed that almost every new startup was piggybacking on your uh, social graph and using your APIs to fuel growth. So my question is, is there a are you going to continue to offer that for free and work with them on a partner basis, or do you have plans to monetize it in the future? And uh, the second question would be, is there a specific reason why the share functionality for the mobile app was greatly decreased versus the uh, share functionality that you have on the normal browser-based version of Facebook? Um, 
So hopefully this yeah. mic is working out great. Yeah. Um, on on uh, the the first question, I, no, we very much value partnership. I mean, the more that um, we have uh, uh, startups and other companies that are making use of the platform, it drives engagement on on Facebook, and it helps to reinforce that that uh, one of the core values of of the platform, which is uh, identity. If everybody's using the system as an identity system, then it becomes more valuable as an identity. And by the way, system. that is why it is named Open Graph. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so, <laughs> so um, you know, even when uh, you know a, a vendor like Pinterest gets tremendous growth, that's that's actually good for Facebook uh, mm -hmm. because it, it helps to drive uh, engagement on yeah. on the site as well. Mm -hmm. um, as to your second question, I, I, I can't give you the specific uh, design decisions um, around you know l you know like versus share and how prominent they are, um, but. Uh, uh, so I'm probably not the best person to, to answer yeah. that question. But, but may, may yeah, please. Hello. Yes. Hi, Mark Jackson from McCann. Uh, the, a lot of uh, brands, uh, the CIO role has evolved a lot over the years. What would your advice be as, as a CIO in Facebook that you would give to them as they are starting to move closer to marketing, to sales, and integrating? What would be your advice? This, this is one of the things I'm really uh, excited and interested in, uh, is the role between the CIO and the CMO. Um, because I think what's, what's happened for uh, CIOs over the last 10 years uh, is that you know, the, the job for a while was starting to get kind of irrelevant. Uh, mm -hmm. With consumerization of technology and the... Uh, uh, you know, the, just the, the rapid, with cloud, things like cloud computing, it was just getting easier and easier to do the basics, and there really wasn't very many opportunities to differentiate using uh, information technology. Um, at the same time for the CMO, you know, the world has become more and more digital, and the CMO has needed a partner to go figure out how to take advantage of all these digital media strategies. Well, now in today's world, I think the partnership between the two is the answer to the CIO's conundrum. <laughs> Um, which is, uh, you know, two things. One, first off, go and understand all your data assets that you've been amassing over the years and, and, and understand, like, what insights that you can bring to your company. And the, the part of the company that's most likely going to benefit from that mm -hmm. is your marketing organization. And two, partner with uh, your CMO to um, help them, uh, you know, build new uh, innovative digital strategies for how they reach out and engage with, uh, with customers. And I think that the CIO-CMO partnership is, is a trend that we'll see more of over the next uh, five years um, uh, to the point that, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I would not uh, put it beyond some companies to have, you know, the two reporting into the same place or maybe mm -hmm. one reporting into the other. Um, uh, but, but I'm really excited about uh, that trend. And when I talk to uh, some of our customers and the CIOs of, of, of those companies, mm -hmm. that seems to be where they're spending most of their time is uh, with their marketing departments. Thank you, Tim. By the way, uh, who is connected with me on Facebook, I'm publishing a lot about these themes, especially last uh, week I was publishing some articles exactly about why the CIO and the CMO in the future has to get much better along and work closer as a team because we believe that this is a very important thing. And coming back to the question with the open graph, uh, I would like to ask you, um, uh, we, b we believe that m Facebook is also becoming the biggest collection of preferences on the planet, yeah, so maybe in the universe. Uh, but as a matter of fact, uh, how, what, what advice would you give companies? Uh, we have different companies here from, from the airline industry, automotive. I saw banks here today, publishers. What advice would you give them? What should be the strategy for a company uh, working closer with Facebook, with the open graph, to deliver uh, different or better services or better user experience? So I think it, it starts with having presence. Um, and I know that sounds basic, but uh, <laughs> um, one of the things that we've, we find with a lot of our customers is they immediately uh, they see success um, that you know, companies like Nike have had in building these really cool, innovative social apps that drive engagement around the brand and drive a lot of interest in things. But, um, and they want to go straight there. 
but Nike didn't go straight there. You know, mm -hmm. They had a pretty phenomenal brand presence on Facebook uh, first. Mm -hmm. um, second, the way that the platform works, it's something where uh, you know, you're being on Facebook and having a lot of fans is just the place to start, but it's really getting uh, an engagement with your, uh, with your fan base on the platform that, um, that makes a difference. So, um, you know, learning how to do that, learning what are the kind of social messages that do go viral, that, um, uh, that do get you that, uh, you know, friends of friends interaction. Um, and then, thinking about how doing uh, the more exciting and, and interesting application development that takes advantage of, okay. of the platform. Um, and, and I think it, going in that order um, is what we've seen is, is the key recipe of success. Okay. Uh, uh, jumping straight into the digital development without first building up a presence on the platform mm -hmm. and then uh, building out engagement with your fans um, tends to uh, you know, result in, in people seeing less uh, successful implementations of their applications than they otherwise would be able to. So I think that's, that's probably the, the best Good. advice that I can provide. Um, but there is so much opportunity on this platform. It's a, there's nothing like it uh, on the planet. We've never <laughs> before yeah. had the opportunity to connect with so many different people. Yeah. Um, and I think for brands and for marketers, this is a really exciting time to, uh, to be. Ab absolutely. And we heard some hours ago from Scott Galloway that the other company with the G and the kind of plus product is already disappeared and maybe even don't know it. That was his opinion. Yeah. So I can just. I hadn't heard about that company. Really. <laughs> uh, yeah. Last question. Hi. Sebastian from the Identor team. One of the big challenges in the future is uniting the offline and the online world. So actually we do that with a little helpers called smartphone or iPad. But I mean, what is in the future? How do you plan that we humans can directly inter interact with products or with yeah, things around us without needing such special devices? How, but do you have any plans how to generate a fully new user experience? So I think, um you know, we're, we're at the beginning of this strategy and, and what we've done with Open Graph points in the direction of where we're going. Um, certainly what we have seen, uh, you know, the backdrop is the, the ubiquity of technology and the ubiquity of connectivity has made it possible to now, um, you know, just connect almost everything uh, t together at a, at a relatively low cost. Mm -hmm. um, Open Graph provides the framework for us to then make use of different types of connections. It allows you to add different uh, verbs and nouns into uh, the Facebook lexicon so that uh, you, know, you can build additional connections. But I think the next phase is to just make that um, easier and, and more prevalent and to have some great examples. Um, and that's, I, I think, you know, going to take a little bit of time um, as both Facebook and companies that we partner with, um, you know, start implementing these examples. So I, I, I wish I could be a little bit more specific, but I, I think that um, the, 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 the key thing for us is opening up the platform as we have with Open Graph and, um, and, and that combined with what's going on with the digital landscape will make it so that, you know, over the next five years, you're going to see everything from your, your toaster to your television to your refrigerator connect uh, in a way that allow people to share the kinds of information yeah. that, um, um, and in a way that's valuable. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's one thing to, uh, uh, you know, to, to know what music um, your friends are listening to. It's a, another thing to know, you know, what, what's an awesome recipe or a television show yeah. that they're watching. And all these things can connect. Um, and there's just so much opportunity, whether it's social TV or, um, you know, other strategies to do that. Thank you, Tim. I hope that was answering some of your questions. And by the way, uh, we are also partnering with um, um, uh, Facebook, as you all know. Uh, who knows an application called Wisdom? Can you raise your hand? Who, who knows Wisdom? No. 
You should go to Wisdom for Facebook and download it. It is a very cool application that will give you a lot of insight into your social network, and you can really figure out who your friends are, what they are doing, what they are posting, and so on. Um, and with things like social TV, what we just got from Ralph Rotman from Grand Centrix, I think there are a lot of uh, applications coming which are getting closer and closer to the social graph. Think about Spotify. Yeah? So I get hundreds of lists every day from from Spotify, what my friends are listening and watching. Yeah, maybe in the television spaces will happen very soon. Tim, thank you so much for coming over, making all the efforts. I really appreciate that. I hope that you could appreciate Tim Campus as well. Uh, I think it is uh, really an honor to have you here. Uh, and hope we, will we see you at the party tonight? Uh, you might, you might. Oh, yeah, come on. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure you will come. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay, thank you for having you for coming over. Yeah, and having you. Thanks. Bye. So you can leave this with me. Thank you.